Hi boys and girls, welcome to art class. You might have noticed that I am not here with you today, so you have virtual Mrs. Hagen. Don't worry, I am okay. I am just taking a trip and I will be back very, very soon. I will see you guys after Thanksgiving. And when I come back after Thanksgiving, we will continue working on our painting project. Today you are not working on your painting project. Sorry dudes, I want to work on it with you. I don't want to miss any of it. Um, I will see you when we I come back and we will work on that then until then we are going to have some fun and today you are going to learn about something called non objective art which means that it's not going to be a picture of anything non objective means no object will be in it instead we are going to have some fun working with colors and patterns and shapes so before we start learning what you guys are going to be doing today, I'm going to give you a little bit more information on what non-objective means. Because most of the time in art, we try to make paintings or drawings or pretty much everything we do in a way that it looks realistic okay, or it looks close to real life. So here is a watercolor painting that is kind of realistic. And some of you might be thinking, well, Mrs. Hagen, I know what non-objective is. It's just abstract art. That's not exactly the case. Right? So this is a piece of abstract art. Right? Abstract art is a picture of something, okay? But it doesn't look exactly like real life. Non-objective art literally means that there's nothing in it that it represents, all right? It is simply a picture of color and pattern and shape. And sometimes non-objective art is used to represent an idea or a feeling, but it's not used to represent a thing or an object. That is why it's called non-objective art. And I am going to give you four choices on what you could do for your art today, which is really exciting. Hey right, friends, so choice number one is actually going to be something like this example that I showed you. Uh, and I'm going to show you how I started and finished this. I did not just scribble all over this project. I actually thought about it before I did it. I'm gonna to turn to a new page in my sketchbook. Right? If you guys wish to, you can use your sketchbooks today or you can just use a regular piece of paper. Either one is okay. Right? And to start, the first choice, you want to pick a color or maybe more than one color. And you're just going to start by shading in a part of your paper. All right, in my first one, I just made it go all one way. This time I'm gonna make it a little bit wiggly. And you're just shading in that area. Then, you can make a pattern inside that shaded area. Now look, make sure that you shade and you don't scribble. There is a difference between shading and scribbling. Shading fills in the whole space. Scribbling would have great big white spots and I'm sorry that it's a little hard to see on my camera, guys. Right. So then you can start adding some shapes inside this shaded part. I'm doing circles. And I'm going to let them change sizes where this kind of changes sizes. But you could do triangles, you could do rectangles. It's whatever shapes you want to. And then I'm going to start putting some lines in between the shapes. I'm going to do a zigzag line, but you could do a straight line. You could do a curvy line. You could do a dashed line or a dotted line. Lots of different things that you can do. And then I start moving outside of this area. I could choose to do more shapes outside this area. And I'm going to do a couple of triangles. And maybe I connect those shapes then. 
Maybe I do three lines to connect these shapes. And I'm skipping this part, but I could go right over top of it if I wanted to. You get to decide what's in front, what's in back. And you can see that when I cut my hands. This line now looks like it's behind that other line. And see how I'm kind of mimicking those same curvy shapes? You can do that, or you can do something that's called juxtaposition, which means you have two things that aren't related that fuse together. So I could actually do that here. Maybe I put a straight section right down because everything else is curved. Having that straight section in there is a little bit different. And then you just keep going. Maybe you add lines that are the same color side by side. Maybe you add dots. Maybe you add, I don't know, dashes or speckles. It is up to you. You just keep going and kind of do whatever you feel like doing, but you're kind of, you're thinking about it. You're not just scribbling all over the paper. You're putting thought into what you're making. And so I'm making these dots follow this. And you just keep doing whatever feels right. And that is choice number one. Choice number two is going to be a Zen Tangle, which some of you might have chosen to do for your dot project. And I'm going to start that one with a pencil. You don't have to. You could start with a crayon. That's okay. And that Zen Tangle, you're going to start by kind of making yourself a border to fill in. So I'm just going to put a swoop here, maybe a swirly here, and a wiggle and a wiggle. Yours doesn't have to look like mine. And then inside, I divide it up just by making more little wiggles. And then the fun part comes in. You get to take your crayons and you fill in each space with a different pattern. And you could use different colors on each of your patterns. You could use just the same color with different pressure. And so I made a light line by pushing light okay, and a um, dark line by pushing or hard. Okay. I could fill it in even more by switching colors if I wanted to. Okay. This is your Zentangle. So you just kind of do whatever feels like it goes in that section. And then I move on to the next section and I do something new. I do checkerboards, I could do circles, but they all stay in the same section. And then I move on to the next one when I'm done. And that is your second choice. You would fill your whole section or paper up with these fun patterns. And if you get done the inside, you can do something on the outside too, which can be really, really fun. Your third choice is a tie-dye. Right? I'm going to do mine with rainbow colors, but you don't have to. You could use any colors that you want to. And I'm just going to use the rainbow so it's easier to keep track of what I'm doing. And the first thing you do is you pick a shape. Some friends might recognize this project from other years. I'm going to just pick, oh, let's do circles. And you'll start with your first color and you'll make your shape. You want to make three or four of them. I'm only going to make three. Maybe you do five. I would not do a whole bunch of them because the next step is you're going to make your tie-dye lines. And because I did a circle, I can just spin mine as I go. And if you didn't do a circle, that's okay. But you can still rotate. And all I'm doing is I'm coming out from that shape. And I do the same thing here. I come out from that shape. And I keep going and going and going and going.
and it's kind of soft and that's okay. I don't want to push really hard because I don't want to break my crayon. But I don't really want to be up on the edge either or I'm going to get lots of lines. If that's what you like though, if you like those lines, you could make lines out like that. That's okay. You know, I might add a few of those. Those are actually kind of fun. And then you move on to your next color. And you overlap just a little bit and you keep going. And then when I went the whole way around these shapes, I'd move on to my next color. And if you wanted to make a pattern and repeat, you could. And you can also go in your shapes. And you keep going until you run out of paper. And that is your third choice. And what ends up happening is it kind of, there we go, you guys can actually see it that way a little better. It ends up looking kind of like a tie-dye shirt, which is pretty cool. Hey, boys and girls, and your last choice today is something that I call the wiggle worm, because it kind of ends up looking like a whole bunch of little caterpillars together. And to do this one, you're just gonna start with that pencil like you did for your Zentangle. And you're gonna divide your paper up by making just two lines. So it's like a curvy plus sign. And then you pick a color, it can be any color. And you're gonna make bumps down that line. So I'm following that line I made. And then I do the same thing on the other side, but I make the bumps touch. See how they're touching? And then I do all of the lines. And I keep going and going and going. And they can be big bumps, or little bumps, or medium bumps. They're your bumps, it's up to you. You get to choose. I could even make curly Q bumps. Mm -hmm. And then, you start going in the sections, and what you do is you bump them out and out and out. And you could use all the same color if you wanted to. I'm not going to because I think it looks more interesting to do multiple colors. But if you don't want to, you don't have to. Again, this is your picture. And notice how I'm starting at the edge. And I'm diving into the bump here. Okay. It's kind of the same thing over and over and over. And just keep going. And I could repeat colors if I want to, or I could add even more colors. And when they start to run into each other, Then you skip that part later. Right, so right here, these two are touching. So now when I do this inside part, I only go up to that line and I stop. And see how it kind of looks like the outside of a caterpillar? And then on this side, it'll do the same thing. It'll come out and go the other way. So I'm gonna finish this section, and then this one, and then this one, and then this one, and then I'm done. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about those four different ways to make a non-objective piece of artwork. Obviously, those are not the only four ways that there are out there, but those are some choices that you have today. You guys can pick one or more of those to do, and you can do them in your sketchbook, like I said earlier, or you can do them on a regular piece of paper. You can do as many of those four choices as you would like, because this is your art time. I can't wait to see you guys after Thanksgiving when we get to start our painting project together. So next time you will need paint, and you'll need your container of water, and your thing to dry off your paintbrush, and your brainstorm, 
or your house picture if you are a kindergarten friend. If you're not a kindergarten friend, you just need that brainstorm. If you are a kindergarten friend, you don't have a brainstorm, but you have our house pictures. All right, guys, I will see you after Thanksgiving. Have a great break. See you later.